Welcome to this presentation. I am Abhay Radhakrishnan, OpenShift Architect from Red Hat. Joining me, Philip Hayes, Runtime's Practice Lead from Red Hat. Hello, Philip. Hi, Abhay. Um, th thanks, thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, just to set a little bit of, of background to what we're going to cover. So, despite the incredible pace of adoption of uh, container orchestration platforms like, like Red Hat OpenShift, the vast majority of EAP workloads are still running on VMs and bare metal. So we're gonna demonstrate how an existing JBoss EAP application can be rehosted on OpenShift with no code changes. I guess in the enterprise world, it was all about automation. Migrating a single workload to OpenShift is, is very straightforward, as we're gonna show um, in this demonstration. For large amounts of applications, though, everything we're gonna to do today can be automated. It can be all built into a pipeline and incorporated with automation tools. Firstly, we will demonstrate an application running on a local JBoss EAP. Then we will discuss the benefits of running a JBoss EAP on OpenShift platform. Then we will show you how to easily install the JBoss EAP leveraging the operators on OpenShift. Then we will deploy the kitchen sink application with no code changes at all on the OpenShift platform. I'm going to start my uh, local JBoss EAP. So let us bring up the application. So we have successfully uh, demonstrated the application running on the local uh, JBoss EAP. Now let us discuss uh, the benefits of running JBoss EAP on OpenShift. So thanks, Abe. Yeah, so I guess there's, there's quite a few benefits. Um, some of the some of the main ones being reduced operational costs. Um, there's a lot of, of tools that come with OpenShift out of the box, such as the EAP operator that we're going to go through today. Um, things like Service Mesh, the CI/CD tools, and so on. Um, there's a lot of tools around, also around monitoring and metrics. These all just kind of come out of the box and can be utilized by EAP applications running on OpenShift. You, you should also see vastly improved resource usage as well, which effectively means much lower memory footprint, much higher density of workloads on your uh, on your resources. So, um, included with that, you know, we're going to use today the EAP Source to Image Builder, which is um, a specialized tool to build tools for OpenShift from EAP applications. And that, you know, that there's a lot of smarts within that that will greatly reduce the image size and footprint uh, to really just deploy what is required to run that application on the platform. Um, I suppose finally then there's also, you know, much improved developer experience. Um, and also you get all the additional benefits of the, the Red Hat Runtime uh, portfolio as well, which includes things like uh, Data Grid and SSO and Message Queue. To really start kind of modernizing your applications and bring them into a cloud native type application world. So, by taking an application and installing an OpenShift, we can benefit from the ease of use, reliability, and scalability that a Kubernetes platform like OpenShift can offer us. By running JBoss EAP modules on OpenShift, we can reduce the infrastructure spend significantly, reduce the time to market, and ensure higher reliability. All this while taking advantage of the hybrid cloud model. All right, so in our experience, the majority of EAP 7 applications uh, rarely present any code changes uh, which would impact containerization. But just to sort of give uh, our customers some visibility on this, Red Hat, Red Hat provide the migration toolkit for applications. So you can see from this screen, we're, we're selecting containerization or you know checking to see whether or not this application uh, is, is cloud ready. So we're selecting that, and then we would typically see the kind of results then, which we see on the next screen, which will show you know zero critical or mandatory uh, issues. So, and this is measured by story point, you know, a simple sort of agile methodology to show that there's really no work effort required to make this uh, cloud ready. So yeah, so using the migration tool for toolkit for applications, you can get the the confidence that this application will run on the cloud without any code changes. So the first step in this process is to install a JBoss EAP operator on OpenShift. Joining EAP. I'm going to install this operator here. Yeah, so the, the nice thing about this is that this is something that can be done by the administrator and then allowing developers then to 
probably application. So it's kind of a separate task that can be done by administrators. All right. So the installed uh, operator is ready right now, right? So we can look at the uh, list of installed operators that it has been uh, successfully installed. So once the EAP operator is deployed, we can now switch to the developer view and we can actually deploy the application on OpenShift. So there's a few steps to this, uh, create a new OpenShift project. We're going to uh, deploy a MySQL database, which we're going to use to, to connect to to store information. We're going to create a pull secret from uh, our uh, registry credentials. And we're then going to use a Helm chart to create the, the build configurations to actually build and, uh, and store the image uh, in an image stream. Once the, uh, once the image is built, we're then going to create a configuration map which just stores the database credentials uh, to connect to MySQL. And then we're going to deploy using the EAP operator that we, that we just deployed a few minutes ago. So I'm switched to myself to the developer view here and then uh, going to create a project as we saw in the steps. Mm -hmm. EAP demo. So now the project is created. Uh, we want to stand up the database. We can also use an existing uh, database, right? So for uh, the sake of this demo, I'm going to create a, a simple MySQL database. So for this particular database, um, we have the database service name as MySQL. And I'm going to use the uh, connection name as EAP and the password as uh, demo. And the database name, I'm going to call it as EAP. So the MySQL database uh, is being uh, created at this point of time to support the application. Yeah, the next step is to create a pull secret with the Red Hat uh, registry service. Yes, yeah, so this this is used. So once we once we deploy the Helm chart, that will create two build configs, which will require images from uh, registry.redhat.io. So this pull secret will, will be used to pull those uh, those images down into the cluster. So I'm creating a secret um, from the data that we just um, you know copied or downloaded from the registry site. And I'm calling it as my pull secret. So the next step in the process is to kind of build the application using the Helm charts. So we have the code for the install Helm charts here. Now I go back to the console and selected the Helm option and uh, clicking on the install Helm chart and uh, selecting the EAP uh, to choose the EAP 74 uh, Helm chart. And since we already have the template in place, I'm going to choose the YAML option. So, so I'm calling it with a meaningful uh, release name here, which is kitchen sink. Yep. Copying the definition. Cool. Yeah. So if you want to go back to the form view, then we'll see. Yeah. So, and if you expand the build option there, um, you should see the, if you scroll down, you should see the, the, um, the location of the source code there, the Git repository. The branch. Uh, we've also got the pull secret that we, we created a few minutes ago. That's been that's going to be used to pull the the S2I images down, and it's got the context do, do which is kitchen sink. And then if you expand the the deploy section, you should see that that's disabled because we only want to build using um, we only want the Helm chart to to trigger the builds. We don't want it to do the deployment. I think what it's also worth pointing out as well, even though we we pasted in YAML there. Everything we just did, you could just do here through the UI as well. So um, it's just we just kind of made a shortcut here to, to, to do this configuration. So yeah, so if you do the install and then that will create two build configs. If we go to the builds, we should see. So we've got two build configs. The first one is that, that's running is the build uh, kitchen sink build artifact. So that's going to create a kind of a larger image, which has got all of the build um components in there like you know the maven artifacts and so on and it's going to create, create a second image then which is a much smaller image which, which is the one that's going to be deployed so while the builds are happening uh we will create the configuration map required for the database details mm -hmm. so i'm going to again um you know take advantage of the template we have yeah pointing to the database that we have created earlier yeah So I'm going to create a config map using the um, data that we have created yeah. earlier. 
So what will happen is when, when we deploy the image with the operator, we will we will define this config map, and that would the operator will use that config map then in order to provision the, the database connection for the application. So these should these match the MySQL database that, that we created a few minutes ago. Now let us check the build status. So I'm going to go into the kitchen sink build artifacts and click on builds, and uh, this build is complete. Now let us go and uh, check the build status here, right? So can go here and uh, now let's get to the logs. Yeah, so you can see here it's complete. It's pushed the image to the uh, the image registry on OpenShift. So that's good to deploy that now. You can deploy that uh, with the operator. Next step, we'll go to the add here, and we can use this option here, which is the operator backed. Yeah. So what's nice here is so you have, because even though you're logged in as a developer, you you can now deploy a Wildfly server or, or an EAP application because the administrator has deployed this operator already. So it's now available for you to use as a developer. So yeah, if you, let's let's paste in the YAML from the uh, from the configuration. But again, all we're doing here is we're just we don't you know we're just uh, pasting in configuration values that we could put in through the UI if you wanted to. But it just shows that it's quite nice that you can you can do all of this stuff either through YAML, you know, which could be in some kind of a CI CD process, or you can just do it manually here from the UI. So um, now we have come into the form view here, right? You can say the name of the application kitchen sink and it will be in a replica for one instance. And the application yeah. image can be the whole thing, or we can just put the kitchen sink the latest, so it will pick up yeah. the latest uh, build application. Uh, That's right. Yeah, and it's just getting from the same name. So then, actually, if you expand down the config maps uh, or the env farm, you should see if you scroll down the config map reference there, because that's telling it to get, uh, or, you know, to use that config map as environment variables, which again will configure the, the MySQL database. So, so if you go ahead and click on that, then um, and that, you know, and apply that or create it, it should uh, go ahead and deploy. So what? So you've got, you can see the. Um, that's actually created the stateful set. You can see the Wildfly service, and it's within that it's got a stateful set. That's going to spin up the uh, the pod, and you can see that pod is now pending. So it's pulling down that image, and it's now going to create a container, and it's going to deploy that EAP application. And it, along with that as well, it's also created services. It's also created routes as well. So you've got an external route onto the application. So once that's deployed, uh, again, you can click on view logs there um, on the pods, and you should see the um, you should see the logs. That's the yeah. Then that's the build. If you go back to the topology again, okay. Now uh, we can see this particular uh, pod is being ready, right? So let's look at the application here. So I'm going to the routes. So when you click on the route. It's bringing the application. So I'm going to do a simple uh, uh, test data here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And we can see uh, the application is successfully deployed on the OpenShift platform with no code changes. Great. No, that's that's really cool. So yeah. So as 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 you say, basically we've taken that EAP application. We you know we showed it running. You know, on on a on a local machine, um, just within AP, and we've then we packaged that up, used the S two I build process to create an image of that application, and, and you know, cut down image actually requiring just just the required um, libraries and so on in order to be able to run that uh, within AP, and we've we've then we've built that using using the Helm chart, and we've deployed it using the operator. So. So yeah, um, you know, again, we can see that it's extremely easy to to move uh, applications, EAP applications, uh, onto OpenShift with with no code changes. All right, thank you. All.